All right, we will go ahead and get started now. Again, my name is Tom Lyons. I'm a senior engineer with, with Inflow Communications, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar today for troubleshooting call issues using Brightmetrics. Um, today, we are going to cover the basics of how to use Brightmetrics to find problem calls, get the information that we need, um, and even search to see where that call went and then the flow that it followed, um, give you some pointers on what to look for and how to use it. Um, and also what we would need on the support side um, for any call issues that do come up. Um, again, my name is Tom Lyons. I am a senior engineer with Inflow Communications. Um, I've been here for over five years at this point um, and am well versed in Shortel and Mitel systems, both the um, director and older versions of Shortel, as well as Mitel Connect, um, as well as Peer Cloud and Ring Central. Um, before we get started today, um, a couple of our other webinars that are coming up this week. Um, we do have one tomorrow on the 21st, um, maximizing your inflow support and success program benefits. So this will be how to best leverage your contract and, and engagement with inflow communications to make sure you're getting the absolute most you can out of um, the partnership there. And then on the 22nd, we have five easy ways to enhance your customer engagement using Twilio. This is another tool that we offer at Inflow, and we will have a presentation on how to get started with that and how it could um, help your productivity in your phone system environment. A little bit about Inflow before we get started here today. Um, Inflow does have a sole focus on unified communications and contact center solutions. We do not do anything like networking or sell any other any sort any other sorts of equipment. We we handle voice. Voice, voice is our primary focus, and that's what everybody here is well versed in. Um, we are a Mitel Platinum partner, as well as partnered with Ring Central and Genesis Peer Cloud. We have offices and employees in ten states. We currently support over 180,000 endpoints in over 800 customers nation and even worldwide. Our support team is available via email, the web portal, and the phone. And I'll have contact information for you at the end of our webinar today. And we are maniacal about the customer experience. We wanna make sure that we get you all the information that you could ever require for your system, make sure that it's running as efficient for you as possible, and um, catch and fix any problems we encounter along the way. This slide is just a snippet of some of the customers that we provide support for. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Now through this um, webinar, um, we are gonna go over the Brightmetrics platform, um, kind of explain what it's good for, what you can use it to find very easily, especially as opposed to the call logs, which we covered in part one of the troubleshooting um, webinar that we did last month. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, there is a questions box that you will find um, in your GoToWebinar login. You can use that to type in questions, and at the end, I will take a look and see and see what we have, and I will get those answered to the best of my ability. If we need to follow up, we can shoot an email as a follow up as well. But I'm going to go ahead and jump into this. It's going to take about 30 minutes for us to get through. Um, and so the first thing that I wanted to go through is why bright metrics. Why would we use this instead of standard call logging? Um, to find issues. And there's actually quite a few really good reasons to use this tool. Um, if you're not familiar with Brightmetrics, um, or if you're if you're newer to it, Brightmetrics is a very robust reporting service that um, comes with the inflow support packages that we offer and allows you to do a number of different things with call detail reporting as well as agent detail reporting and even call flow diagrams. So there's a number of things it can do. Um, so one of one of the many reasons that Brightmetrics is honestly preferable to the call logs for most of the situations that you'll run into is that it's usable from any PC. Um, because of the way Brightmetrics operates, um, it will allow you to get the information you need from the server if you want it from there, from inside the office or even outside the office because it uses an agent-based um, web solution and gets the information on demand. So if you need to check on an issue from outside the office instead of having a remote desktop in, get into the server, pull a log, um, fire, fire up a editor like Notepad++ and then dive through, you can use Brightmetrics to find the same information much quicker. Um, it also has, as I, as I noted, very robust reporting that allows for a multitude of options. Um, so you can essentially think of it, if you've used the built-in short haul reporting, as a tool that not only gives you the information that the short haul reports do, but actually gives you much more, and it's much easier to read. 
Um, that's even more so if you are used to contact center reporting, which would be a different webinar for another time, because um, it can handle that as well. But you can see pretty much everything you need to for your system at a glance in Brightmetrics. There are also call flow diagrams based on the day and applied schedules. Um, this is very handy for figuring out if you have a routing issue with some, with, uh, some of your numbers or if things just don't seem to be working the way that you want. You can actually type in, um, type in a number to dial or even start from a specific menu like your main auto attendant. And you can see how the flow is mapped out if somebody were to call that and adjust it based on the time of day and the schedule. Um, so you can even see what happens after hours or if you're on a certain holiday schedule just to make sure things are looking right. It's also a great tool if you're making any changes because you can you can actually take a diagram from when you start, make another diagram when you finish, you can compare and make sure it looks the way that you want it to look. You can also see your agent login and logout details. This is important if you're running to issues with group calls having problems because um, sometimes that issue can be as simple as you don't have the right agents logging at the right time so people aren't available. Um, and you can see that in Brightmetrics very easily. And finally, if you can't get the information you require from Brightmetrics, which does happen, um, you can actually use Brightmetrics to find call GUIDs if the organization doesn't use the um, connect or communicator client. Um, and even then you could still do it. Um, it's just typically a little bit easier through the client, but you can get these through Brightmetrics if you can find the call. So those are all big reasons to use Brightmetrics for this kind of stuff. There's a few different reports we're gonna, we're gonna look at today. Um, these are reports that I typically use for troubleshooting to see what I can find. Um, and just to go down the list here, and then we'll jump in. Um, we, we like to run user activity detail reports for specific users reporting issues to see if we can find a um, correlation in what they're seeing. Um, this will allow us to see all of their calls, pull up all of their call GUIDs um, at a glance take a look and see if they're ending at a specific time, if they're getting a specific uh, hangup reason. So we can see a lot of stuff there. Trunk activity detail reports are good for general issues with calls. So if many users are reporting um, issues or if they're, if they're have it happening um, sporadically throughout the day, maybe in spurts, the trunk activity detail report with filters will allow you to see what's going on if you're seeing um, certain calls end at the same time for the same reason, which can indicate a trunking um, a trunking switch or a carrier issue um, and allow you to just see all the calls that are going through there. Um, call flow diagrams, as I just mentioned on the previous slide, are excellent for finding call routing issues. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys that and how to manipulate those here. Um, agent login and logout details, which will show you everything that your agent does when they go on break, when they release, when they resume, um, if you're using contact center. Um, and for work groups, you can see them when they're logging in and logging out. So you can kind of put that together and say, okay, we didn't have anybody logged in at 10.30 when this person called. That might be why this person didn't get to somebody. And then finally, search by external number. That can be for one specific caller having issues. So people that are, people that are calling in um, or people that you're calling where you're having specific issues to one number, or at least it's one number that you, um, at that time that you know is having a problem. You can do that to very quickly search for and find that information. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually pull up Brightmetrics, which is right here. And let me go ahead and log in real quick. And I'm going to go to our dashboard here. And so this is the main page for Brightmetrics. This is going to be what you log into. Um, you'll see, you'll want to make note of this part in the URL if you've never been here before, webapp.brightmetrics.com. This will um, bring you to your portal so that you can log in and then log into your organization if you are an administrator on the Brightmetrics side. If you should be an administrator on the Brightmetrics side and you are not, let our support team know and we can help you out and get you added. Uh, but this is gonna be what you see. Um, you'll have a bunch of different summaries at the top. That's not what we're concerned about today. What we're gonna go over is the reports that we're gonna use to actually see if there are any call issues. And so what I'm gonna click on is on-demand reports first. And when I click on on-demand reports, you're gonna see a little page pop up similar to this on the left side. If you have contact center in your environment, you will see a second tab that'll say ECC 2.0, um, and that has different. And that will um, allow you to do contact center reporting. Um, under here though, are a bunch of built-in reports that will allow you to do what you need for the system. 
Um, you can also create your own reports, which would be another topic for another time. I believe we actually have a webinar coming up for Bright Metrics training in the near future. Um, but to go over what we want, you'll see broken into different groups. Um, you will see a user activity detail and summary report up at the top under users. And then for the other ones that we want to use um, that we talked about, they're actually all under system. And that's going to show you your search by external number, your trunk activity detail, and your trunk activity summary. Um, and then a couple other ones that can come in handy depending on what occurs is trunk utilization, if you're running to issues with trunks maxing out and you're not sure. Um, and also the media stream detail and summary. These are very, very um, important to use if you're running into issues like underruns and jitter. Um, this will give you an, an idea of how many calls are having that issue and will let you um, help determine if there could be an issue with one isolated user, or if it could be a bigger issue, like an issue across the network. So what I'm gonna do here to start is I'm gonna show you how the user activity detail works. I'm gonna click into into the user activity detail and the second pane will open, which will allow me to modify my report based on what I want to see. Um, under your call date and time, you can change the range um, that you wanna see. In this particular case, we'll just look at yesterday, um, just so we can, we can limit the amount of records that we see. Party name is going to be the user. Um, if you have it set to all, then it's going to look at all the users that are set up in the system here. And if, um, by going through these, you can actually change which users you look at. So if you click on one, another um, menu is going to pop up where you can select the user that you want. So any of these users in here. If you do multiple, you'll click on this link to select values. And then you would select all of the users that you want to um, see. And you can even use this as a search bar to, to find the specific user instead of scrolling up and down. And then you would apply and that would affect the uh, party names that you're looking at. And you can also do a range if you really want to for this. This is more for date. Um, but if you want to do it by user, um, you could do it from this this user, this 2425 surrogate to ED overflow as an example, and it would take all of the users in that range. So it's not quite as um, user friendly as the others, but you can do that if you want. We're going to go ahead and for today, we'll just do a party name of all. Call date and time. Um, it does it by the hour. You can you can change this and look at the entire day. You can look at a specific hour, which is on a 24 hour time format. Um, you can look at multiple values. So if you wanna look at specific hours during the day and then the range as well, which is where, which is where this comes in more handy. So you, if you wanna look from six to 17, which is five, um, you could do that at a range and it would look at that, those specific hours. Call type is the same. Um, it works the same as the others above, but the differences here is you'll want it either set to all, so you can see all your internal um, and external calls, or if you're looking for a specific call, um, you can look for only outbound or only inbound if you want, or even VM login calls, if you're suspecting somebody is doing a lot of VM login work. Um, and also you can do multiples here. Um, often you'll see inbound and outbound, but not external, or not in extension to extension. Um, leveraged here just to make the report smaller. You can also decide if you wanna see only answered calls um, or see them all at the same time, or even not answered calls. And then party type is going to include station, which is a user, workgroup agent, and then virtual. Um, so um, for this particular part, you're gonna see station. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit preview report. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna reach out to the server, grab, the information and then you're gonna see there's a whole bunch of different users. It's broken down by user. Um, it's already um, sorted by time and we already know that it's only for yesterday. And you can you can see all of the users calls if they're inbound or outbound, if they hit a work group, the dialed number um, and caller ID and the trunk that they come in on, as well as the time. So you can see a whole bunch of info here. And what we can do is we can actually take a look at specific calls by clicking on any of the hyperlinks. So just as an example, I'm gonna click on this inbound call here for, or this outbound call for this user. And if I click on it, it's going to pull up an agent result. And then you'll see a little detail um, for the call. If there, if there are multiple legs, like if the call comes into a main auto attendant and then you see it, um, and then it bounces to a work group and then somebody picks it up, you'll actually see that in the timeline. 
Um, so you you will be able to follow the call and see where it goes, how long they're on hold, how long they're waiting for an agent to pick up, and how long they're on the call with the agent. If I click on any of these fields, so if I click on this top one here, you're going to get the information such as the number that called in this particular case, the port name, the connect and disconnect time. So this is when they initially con connected their call and when the call got disconnected. The duration in seconds. So I can see that this was a 225 second call. The connect reason. So this tells me called and it also shows me the color, which indicates that this guy up at the top, this top line is the um, origination of the call itself. Um, your disconnect reason, normal means that the short hole side hung up. If you see hang up here, that means that the far side hung up the call. Those are both normal reasons for a disconnect. If you see anything else there, like a busy, a timeout, um, QoS unavailable, which is one that comes up from time to time, um, or PSTN error, those are all issues that you should bring to support because that means that there was an abnormal hang up to the call. Um, and the best, the best indicator for that is if you're having a rash of issues and you see disconnect reasons that aren't normal or hang up, definitely bring it to us right away. Even if you're seeing hang up a lot, I would, I would give us a call or send us a ticket with the information that we want to see just so that we can um, make sure that we've got everything going and can support you very quickly. You can also see the trunk direction, how long the call rang before it actually got picked up, and the talk time and even the hold time. So I can see this user was on hold for, or this caller was on hold for 12 seconds before the call hung up. Um, you can also get, which is very important for any deep dive call troubleshooting, the call GUID, which is what we use to actually dig through the NCC logs that we went over last month to make sure um, if there were any specific issues or packet issues, which is one thing that Right Metrics does not report directly against. It does not grab the packet detail information for each specific call, and that is where the NCC logs do come in. So if you're having a rash of call quality issues, um, the call GUID is very, very important to get to us just so we can look and take a, take a look and see if there's any specific issues that the switch or the phone are reporting. And that's the user activity detail report. The summary report is much the same, except instead of showing you all the details of every single call, it's just going to tell you how many of each call that they got, um, the user got, and then if you click in, then it will bring it into a um, detail report. So this is good to look at a, at a, a glance and say, oh, I didn't see this user on the phone a lot today. I'm wondering if they're having an issue getting calls. You could run the summary report and sure enough, they should be getting maybe 30 to 40 calls a day and they're getting five or six. That could be an issue with the way that the agents are set up. So that, that would be good information to go off. The next one we're gonna look at is the trunk activity detail. Um, this is a lot more simple to run, um, but there's a few extra options and I'm gonna show you the advanced sorting options here momentarily. Um, but for the trunk activity detail, um, you have the ability to look at uh, all of the detail. So this would be all um, all the CDR details on your trunk activity um, for as long as the CDR has been um, available, which can be up to 2,000 days. This can be a very large report. Um, typically, what you'll use is a range or relative. Um, what I like to do is I like to use a range, and I'll sp set a specific date. So in this case, I'll use today, um, and I'll just go through the full day. You can also do relative, um, which could be the last the last seven days, could be today, yesterday, um, and I'll just use today as the example here. And then under trunk group, you can see all the trunk groups as well, um, or do one multiple or a range. In this particular case, we're gonna do, um, we'll actually do both or all of them in this particular case. If you have a lot of calls coming in, so if you, have, if you take thousands and thousands of calls a day, it's, probably a good idea to go ahead and um, filter this to one or two trunk groups at a time just to make the activity detail report a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to also click into advanced sorting options for this one. When I click this plus, you're going to see a whole bunch of different options. Or I'm sorry, not advanced sorting options, edit mode is what I'm thinking of. This is what I'm talking about. And so this is going to allow you to change the um, way that the report looks and also add rows that will um, be very um, beneficial to you to take a look and see what's happening. And in this particular case, I'm gonna take, I'm going to um, add the answered row. I'm gonna add the extension row. And I'm gonna add the disconnect reason row. So that's gonna tell me if a call was answered or not. So if it made its way to an agent, um, it'll tell me the extension that was, that was reached. 
Um, and it will also tell me the disconnect reason of the call. And the reason that that is nice is I can take a look at all the calls in the activity report and without having to drill in and see the disconnect reason, I can see if they look good. And as a part of that, make sure that I'm not getting a whole bunch of timeouts all at the same time, potentially dropping calls, because that can be an indicator of um, something going on during the day. So if you're getting if you're getting a whole bunch of calls dropped during the day, this is a great tool to see, hey, um, I, I just had reported 30 calls dropping at the same time. Um, let's go see what that reason is, and that'll allow us to dig deeper and see um, what the issue may be. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit preview report here again. And when this runs, you'll see a whole bunch come up. So I've got a whole bunch of different calls here. Um, and you can see I've got the trunk, so the trunk and the port, the call date and time, the direction, if it's an inbound or outbound call, you can see there's quite a few outbounds here. If they were answered, the extension that that was calling, and if it's an outbound call, that'll be redundant to caller ID. Um, and then the disconnect reason, which we expect to see typically normal or hang up, which I have highlighted, and the number that was dialed. And if I click into these, just like the activity detail reports, it's gonna show you all of the information here. And I can see at a glance without even um, clicking in that this call rang for five seconds and then was on the phone um, for five seconds afterward. So you can see this information here. And just like before, you can grab the call GUID. So if we need anything on this particular call, we can take a look there. If you wanted to save this particular report, so this trunk activity detail with the extension, the disconnect reason in it, you can hit save as. And if you do that, um, it's going to ask you what the report group is. And if I do this and I just type in disconnect reason so I can differentiate it and I put it under system, I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna save it. And then it's gonna bring me to where you see saved reports here. And it's got a new one that says trunk activity detail disconnect reason. So I can see I can see my saved reports here, and it will keep my custom parameters. So if you want to use custom custom uh, fields such as the disconnect reason, you can do this without uh, without doing anything to the default report, and also allow it to just be used at a at a couple clicks, as opposed to having to go through that edit mode every time. Going back to standard, the trunk activity summary again is just like the trunk activity detail, um, except it's going to just show you how many calls were presented. Um, overall. And then trunk utilization is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this over the last 30 days, um, just so you can see this here. Um, but what this is going to do is it's going to tell you how many of the trunks were active maximum at the same time um, throughout the day. And what's nice about that is you can take a look and see what the trends are and see if you're running up against capacity issues, um, which could correlate to you issues like people calling in and saying they couldn't get through for quite a bit of time. It could very well be that you're running out of trunks, that your business has outgrown the trunking capacity that you have in the system, um, and that adding trunks is the way to go. So um, as you can see here, I can see how, how many um, different ports on each um, circuit were active at any one time. So in this particular case, on the 1st of August, I can see that eight ports were active on the PRI here and 12 ports were active max at one time on the SIP circuit. Um, knowing this particular client, I know that that's at about a third of capacity for them because they have um, a number of trunks. So they are in no danger of running into capacity problems. And then finally, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a search by external number. Um, this particular one, if I do a if I do a search here, I can do the date or time. So I'll do yesterday as an example. And then for um, the external number, I can actually enter the number if I want. I could look at all external numbers or I could look at multiple values. So I'm just gonna click on multiple values here real quick. And I'm just gonna select this number here. And if I preview this report, I can see that there was a call that came in um, at 9.43 yesterday for that particular number. And just like the other reports, if I click on this, I'll see all of the activity for that particular call. So if I click on this here, and this is a good example of how you can see where things go. 
Um, so we had a call come in that hit the auto attendant menu. It then went to the work group for um, this particular name to ACS English, and then went to a work group agent here um, who talked to the user for 57 seconds. You can see um, if you use call recording, the call recorder kicked in at that time as well. And then after 50 seconds, um, seven seconds, um, you'll see that this call gets moved over to Clem, um, who gets the call off the transfer. So Seth transferred this call to Clem, talked to him for three minutes and 14 seconds, and then the disconnect reason was normal, meaning that Clem um, disconnected the call when they were done. So you can see all of this at a glance. So those are all very, very um, good reports for um, taking a look at specific call issues. Um, the other thing that you can do in Brightmetrics that can't actually be duplicated very well in the Shortel or MyTel environment um, is call flow reporting. So I'm going to go ahead and click on call, call flow reporting here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, just as an example here, once this guy finishes up here, is a auto, main auto attendant and how it branches out during the day. And it looks like Brightmetrics may be having an issue. So let me see if I can get this guy working. So give me one second here. All right, and we'll see if this guy loads up. And it looks like the web-based agent may actually be having a problem, which is unfortunate timing for us here. Okay, so I'll have to talk about this, unfortunately. But what this is going to do is this is when you use this this uh, applet, you can choose the specific date and time that you want to see, um, and it will default to the the, def the uh, day and time that you are on. It is in 15 minute increments. If you want to change the time that you that you want to look at, you can change this slider to change those 15 minute increments. So um, if I wanted to see what happened at 8.15 PM, for example, I could slide over here to see what would happen. And more than likely that's going to have a schedule effect and change or a schedule change in effect. And so that will have different routing. I can change the starting point that I want to look at. So you can see, you can start this from a menu, which would be a main auto tenant. You can change it from your, uh, change it to a work group. So if you want to look at specific work group flow, hunt group flow, um, route point flow, if you're using route points extensively to make sure that those are going to the right area and even dialed numbers. So if somebody dials a specific number, you'll be able to take a look at that here um, and see where that routes in your system. Um, when you do this and you hit submit, um, what's gonna happen is it's gonna actually open another tab um, and it's going to um, display a visual diagram of the call. So it's gonna show the number or the menu that, you, that you're that you've dialed and it's going to give you a visual flow chart of where where calls go um that will allow you to um go through and make sure that each particular option or each each particular menu is actually pointed at the right spot you can also make sure that your routing is the way that you'd expect after hours to make sure that those calls are flowing in the right way so if you have for example maybe an after hours answering service that you use that goes through an external number um, you can use this to make sure that, hey, when they press one off my auto attempt, they do in fact go to that external number. Um, so this is a very powerful tool. The other thing that we recommend using this for is um, if you're going to make any robust call flow changes um, and you want to you want to tackle that on your own, um, a great way to do this is you can open this the uh, call flow reporting. Um, you can then um, actually at the top of it, you can save it as a PDF. Um, so you have a visual um, re representation of what you started from. Make your changes, then you can go through and do the exact same thing, compare it, and you can see what occurs there um, to make sure that your your changes are what you wanted. Um, and also you have a starting point if for whatever reason you need to move back. So um, it gives you a great way to keep that um, keep that available for yourself so that you have that information. And that is what we have today for Bright Metrics. There is obviously a lot more that this can do, and we will have some more um, some more uh, training on Bright Metrics in the near future. Um, and um, 
I'm going to go ahead and jump into the questions here. So give me one second. If you if you have uh, seen the question box um, in your GoToWebinar um, account there, you can send me a question if you have any. And it looks like we do have a couple. It looks like my audio may have had an issue earlier earlier during the webinar, and I do apologize for that. I'm not sure what occurred, but I'll take a look into that. Thank you very much for letting me know. Um, and then the other question I have is, what if you don't see call flow reporting? Um, so if you don't see call flow reporting in your Bright Metrics login, um, that may be an issue with your user permissions, and that's something we can take a look at. Definitely give us a um, send us an email um, to support at infocommunications.com. We can take a look at your user permissions and adjust them if necessary. If your user has full super user access, then there may be an issue with the installation. So that would kind of be the same boat. Um, definitely let our support know. Let, we'll jump in, take a look, make sure the agent is updating correctly, the troubleshooting tools work, and we'll also make sure we can see it on your account because if you have full super user, super admin access and can't see it, we probably can't see it either. So that's a that's a time where we would actually leverage bright metric support and get that figured out for you. What is the difference between hang up and normal disconnect reason? Is hang up bad? Hang up is not bad. Um, the difference between the two is simply which side of the call hangs up. Um, so when you get a normal disconnect reason, that means that the uh, the uh, user on your side of the system hung up the call. So um, your user hung up their call, they they put down their handset, um, turned off their speakerphone, and disconnected their line. Um, so um, that that's what that means for normal. And hang up is the exact same thing, but it just means the other side. So if you were talking to me from your phone system and I I hung up the call, you would see a reason to hang up. So it's just a, it's just a way to say, hey, the other side hung up. And it's a nice thing to have because if there are issues, sometimes they will present with normal disconnect reasons. And you will be able to see that um, in the logs. And then you can use that to investigate with the carrier who might then say, oh, yeah, we did send a hang up because we had an issue upstream. Um, so there, there are um, good reasons to see that also. Is this WebEx available to be reviewed at a later date for those who arrive super late? Yes, um, so this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you search for Info Communications, it will be there. And then also it will be available on our website. Um, and this is, if you weren't here for the for the previous, um, this was a two-parter. We did a uh, log troubleshooting and how to read the NCC logs last month. Um, so those will both be available and I would highly recommend them as a two-parter because it will paint the full picture of what you can do to um, troubleshoot any call issues. All right, and it looks like that is all the questions we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up our um, our support documentation, how you can reach us here. Um, to connect with Inflow for our current customer resources, um, you can email us at support at inflowcommunications.com. You can also reach us at our support portal at support.inflowcommunications.com. I highly recommend that one. Um, you'll be able to log, create a login, and from that login, you'll be able to see all of your tickets. If you're the main administrator for the system, we can even set you up to see all the tickets that your organization has opened. If you have multiple, multiple people that create tickets with us, um, you can see the statuses and latest updates and reply from there as well. So it's a really nice way to do that. And then you can also, for more critical issues, reach us on the phone at 855-946-3569 or 855-9-INFLOW. We have a three ring answer policy here. You're not gonna be on the, on the line on hold for 10 minutes at a time. Um, we will get to you very quickly and anybody you get will be very well experienced with the Shortel system. And if you want any more information on Inflow support packages, you can shoot us an email to sales at inflowcommunications.com or reach us on the phone at 844-446-3569. So again, on behalf of Inflow, my name is Tom Lyons. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope to see you for some of our future webinars. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day.